This news is funded by viewers like you. Please support our work at democracynow.org slash give. We begin today's show in Dubai, which is hosting the United Nations Climate Summit, known as COP28, Conference of Parties, that starts Thursday, after a year that's likely to be the hottest ever recorded. This is expected to be the largest summit yet with some 70,000 delegates and world leaders and senior officials from nearly every country coming to the United Arab Emirates. President Biden's attended the last two COP summits, and just this month, he called climate change the ultimate threat to humanity. But it has recently been announced he won't be attending this year. Pope Francis was set to be the first head of the Catholic Church to attend, but will instead join remotely due to health concerns, doctors say he has the flu. Hundreds of Catholic institutions worldwide, but none in the United States, the world's top oil and gas producer, have announced plans to divest from oil, gas and coal since the Pope called for a break with fossil fuels in 2015. The president of this year's climate summit is also head of the UAE oil giant Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, or ADNOC. Sultan Al Jaber is the first CEO to be a COP president. We in the United Arab Emirates take uh, this task of hosting uh, COP28 with humility, uh, with a deep sense of responsibility, and we also understand and fully appreciate how urgent this matter is. It has become a top priority uh, for our leadership. I uh, want everyone to know that we have the full political will to support a successful uh, COP28. But leaked briefing documents obtained by the Center for Climate Reporting reveal how the COP28 president and CEO planned to use his role in order to strike oil and gas deals with 15 countries. For China, the document showed Adnok said it's, quote, willing to jointly evaluate international LNG, that's liquefied natural gas, opportunities in Mozambique, Canada and Australia. Documents also outline plans to tell Colombia that Adnok, quote, stands ready to help develop its oil and gas reserves. For more, we're joined by Ben Stockton, investigative reporter at the Center for Climate Reporting, where his new expose is headlined, COP28 President Secretly Used Climate Summit Rule to Push Oil Trade with Foreign Government Officials, with a related piece inside the campaign that put an oil boss in charge of a climate summit. Ben, this is great reporting. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, why don't you start off by talking about how the head of one of the largest oil companies in the world has become head of the U.N. Climate Summit, the largest one ever held. Democracy Now! will be there all next week in UAE, covering this climate summit. How did this all take place? And then talk about the leaked documents. Sure. So, I think uh, what's really at the heart of this latest controversy goes back to the beginning of this year, um, which is when the UAE chose um, Sultan al Jaba to be COP president. Um, and, and like you say, he is not only um, the president of, of this year's cl UN Climate Summit, um, but he is also the CEO of the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. He is a man who um, is actually very interesting. He's someone who wears many hats. Um, not only is he COP president and ADNOC CEO, he is also chairman of a, a UAE state-owned renewable energy company called Mastar, um, and he is also a UAE cabinet minister. So he really has many, many roles that he fulfills a, a, alongside his climate envoy role, which is why he is, um, you know, currently serving as COP28 president. And I think what what really um, led to to this position, and, and what we um, looked at in our piece with the Intercept was was really um, how we um, got to the point where um, not only a CEO but a CEO of a fossil fuel company um, became COP president. Um, you know, he is someone who, over the past 15 years, has really worked to push his um, international image and his green credentials. Uh, he is. 
uh, worked with major PR agencies to, to help shape that image. Um, perhaps no more important than um, the American PR firm Edelman, who, who has worked with Al Jaber since the mid-2000s and, and continues to work uh, today on, on COP28. So it has really been um, a long-term, um, meticulous, really, campaign um, that, has, that has led us to this point. Um, and the point that we arrive at today is, is uh, with these uh, latest um, revelations that, that we worked on, um, we obtained uh, more than 150 pages of uh, internal COP28 documents. Um, and they are briefings that are prepared for Al Jaba ahead of bilateral meetings with foreign governments. Um, and I think the, the remarkable thing about these documents is, is that many of them uh, include talking points um, that have been obtained from um, Adnoc and Mastar, the two companies that Al Jaba is involved in running. Um, uh, and we've obviously seen these revelations really spark a controversy, um, uh, and many, many news outlets have, have picked up on this story. Um, we worked on this initial story um, alongside reporters from the BBC, um, uh, and we've seen uh, yeah, this piece just, just really spread around the world. And Ben, in terms of some of the most uh, shocking aspects of the these communications with some of the major major countries uh, in the world that are producing fossil fuels, could you talk about what most surprised you? Yeah, I think that um, th those examples that Amy picked out about China uh, and about uh, Venezuela were, were particularly interesting, and, and that's something we, we picked out in our reporting. A, a number of the documents um, mention the uh, value of the sales and trading that ADNOC does with these countries. This can you know, stretch into the hundred of, hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars. Um, and like Amy said, that there's, there's mention of strategic partnerships, of um, potential opportunities for, for further international fossil fuel projects, um, uh, as well as those Chinese and, and Venezuelan briefing documents. We, we also saw a document um, for a uh, briefing uh, for a meeting with the Brazilian government. And, and, and what that showed is, is that it appears that, the, um, that Al Jaba planned to ask about um, a deal that was ongoing where Adnoc had actually made a bid for a Brazilian petrochemicals company called Braschem. Um, so, so the specifics of these documents, I think, is, is, is what is really interesting. It does get into some kind of quite minute detail um, in, in terms of the, the business interests of, of Adnoc and Mastar in, in various countries around the world. And can you talk about the involvement of advisors like uh, Mohammed Al Kabi and Oliver Phillips in in COP28 and their ties to the uh, national oil company? Sure. So um, Al, Al Jaba has quite a large team around him, um, and some of those people um, appear to be people who he has worked with um, across the course of his, his career. Um, what we've been told previously by the by the COP28 team is is that staff from um, staff for COP28 are, are independent. Um, but actually, when we we started asking about um, one particular individual, uh, uh, Mohammed Al Kabi, as you mentioned, uh, he is uh, registered as the director of government affairs for COP28. Um, but some of the internal records that we'd seen uh, seem to suggest that that he had some ongoing role at, at ADNOC. Um, which, which we thought was was very interesting, uh, given those those previous statements that, that the COP28 team had given us. So when we went back to them asking questions about Al Kabi, uh, they actually told us that um, he was somebody who worked across um, Al Jaber's entire portfolio. And, and like I said before, Al Jaber is someone who who has many different roles uh, and and seems to at least raise questions about the independence of the of the COP28 team from other other um, entities in the UAE, particularly the oil company. Uh, Oliver Phillips is another man that, that we've written about before. Um, he has played um, a key role in steering the PR efforts around COP28. Um, uh, and he also, uh, at least previously, had a role at, at the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. Uh, wh when we approached COP28 for comment on on Phillips um, some time ago now for that for that intercept piece, they, they told us that he was he was now working full time um, on the conference, uh, but they didn't tell us um, when that uh, employment with the oil company ended and, and when his employment with with the COP28 team started. Uh, our evidence, at least, would suggest that there was at least some crossover between his role at ADNOC and, and his role on the uh, COP28 team. 
Then, um, <clears throat> just before we went to broadcast, we saw a press release that said Al Jaber had stepped down as head of the COP, not head of the um, uh, Abu Dhabi uh, oil corporation. And then there was a news conference, actually. Um, but it turns out this is all fake. That's right. So, I, th I think there has actually been um, quite a bit of misinformation around this conference. Um, it, it's something that um, some uh, other outlets have, have written about quite extensively. Um, the, there was an instance earlier this year where the UAE was accused of um, essentially using fake Twitter bots um, online to, to defend um, Sultan al Jaber and the COP28 and its role as, as host of COP28. Um, I, I've also kind of looked a little bit at, at um, some of the movements online uh, to boycott COP28, which, which seem to be associated with, with some fake Twitter profiles. So, so there really is quite a lot of uh, misinformation around COP. Um, and this uh, latest uh, press release that, that I've heard about going around this morning um, certainly seems to be part of that, that misinformation campaign. And just to be clear, um, uh, this fake news, uh, this fake press release said he had stepped down as head of uh, ADNOC, but would still head the cop. But again, this apparently is fake. I also wanted to uh, turn to what you reported in September on the United Arab Emirates' plans to counter and minimize criticism of the UAE's human rights abuses at COP28. This is a clip of leaked audio you obtained from an exploratory meeting between senior UAE officials and the country's COP28 team. We hear the COP's head of communications, Skonade Magichan. We came up with Qatar with the, with the World Cup, and you know we need to look at. We, they, they will use this opportunity. Yeah, to bring in to it should be that exactly. the UAE. And, and at the end of the day, we're you know hosting the COP28, and we're, on, we're actually on behalf of the presidency. But we need to preserve the reputation of the UAE, um, and uh, to look at how can we protect that and enhance the reputation and to try and minimize those attacks as much as possible. Ben Stockton, can you talk about the significance of this? Uh, I think it, it points to some of the accusations that um, the UAE is using COP28 as a as an a chance to kind of boost its international uh, reputation and, and improve, particularly um, its president, uh, Sultan al Jaber's, or the COP president, Sultan al Jaber's um, international standing. Um, like you said, we, we obtained uh, this recording between, uh, of a conversation between COP28 staff and, and senior UAE government officials. Um, and, and what that recording showed was, was basically the, the, UAE attempting to deflect, or, or, or at least setting plans to, to deflect criticism um, of its human rights record, which we know the, the spotlight will be on um, during this conference. Uh, a number of the human rights groups have, have spoken out about um, you know, political prisoners in the UAE and, and um, a record of, of human rights abuses in the country. Uh, and I think it, it, it really talks to, uh, this recording really, really talks to, to the issue of, of how uh, the country might look to actually just not engage on those issues at all over, over the next couple of weeks, um, much to uh, the annoyance of, uh, I'm sure, of the human rights groups who, who will be watching. And Ben, how do these revelations affect the credibility of the entire COP process? And what's been the re the response of uh, uh, experts and UN figures like Antonio Guterres? Yeah, I think um, it, it's been uh, a reaction of, of astonishment. Really, we, we've heard from a number of uh, senior people who who have who have said that. Uh, obviously, these re revelations um, do uh, call into question the, the integrity of, of COP28. Um, uh, we, we've also heard from uh, former Vice President Al Gore, who, who has been someone who uh, has raised concerns about, about the conflicts of interest surrounding the COP presidency with Sultan Al Jaber's role as both COP president and CEO of an oil company. Uh, and he, he described these revelations as, as really the realization of, of some of those conflict of interest concerns that, that had been raised, you know, back in January when, when Al Jaber was first announced as COP president. 
Um, finally, Ben, are you going to be going? And are you concerned about reporters who are there? I mean, there are going to be 70,000 people there, uh, but who uh, step into these forbidden realms of questioning? Uh, I, I'm not going to be uh, attending. I'll be, I'll be staying in uh, New York during the course of, of COP28. Um, like you, you mentioned, there are uh, various concerns about digital surveillance um, uh, and kind of invasive practices, media freedom, particularly. Um, from from what I've I've seen so far at COP, it, it does seem that the reporters are absolutely free to ask questions. There has been questions about uh, our revelations earlier this week. Um, but yet, like I said, um, I'm, I'm planning to stay uh, here in New York for, for the duration of COP. Ben Stockton, investigative reporter at the Center for Climate Reporting. We'll link to your expose. COP28 president secretly used climate summit role to push oil trade with foreign government officials and your other pieces. And Democracy Now! will be there all next week in the United Arab Emirates, covering the largest U.N. climate summit ever. Stay tuned. Democracy Now! is funded by viewers like you. Please give today at democracynow.org slash give.